All right, guys, hold on one second. There we go. All right, we back in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I couldn't resist. I could not resist there. Well, I don't see anything of value though around these parts. There's no reason to go pick, go looking for a fight here. So we'll just be on our merry way here at the moment. Um, let's see. Now we've got this here. We're gonna head on to this metal flower. Here. Not built for mountain climbing, huh? Right charger an easier time now. Alright. Take a little bit. Throwing off my aim. Can't get a read on where it's coming from as well either. Let me see here. There it is. That's gotcha. Cool. Yeah, Should be burning as well there soon. One more. Those that haven't been into my previous streams there. Glenhawks were found much earlier into my adventure. They are not that tough, but hella annoying. usually travel by themselves here. There's usually always a flock of them somewhere. They're highly susceptible there to fire arrows. That's why I only fired that set of arrows at them there. Okay. 
There you are. Such strange artifacts. Yep. And that was the last of them. Let's see what this one says here. By its own nature, it towers above the tangle of rivers. Don't say it's a lot of dirt, piled high without end. The mist of dawn, the evening cloud, draw their shadows across it. From the four directions, you can look up and see it, green and steep and wild. These have to be poems from, s from somewhere. Unfortunately, though, my poetry research is not up to snuff there to know what. I'm gonna have to dig deeper into that there after I get done with my first wake up. Oh, it's an interesting little mark there. Fortune. A bit. Back into the swirling sands of the desert, and Sunfall is to our right, which is where we were heading anyway. <laughs> For the last vantage point there it wasn't going to be particularly just climb a certain spot there and just view from an easy, huh? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello to you too, boys. Every vantage a story. Yep. Ice orbital. Day 12. As we watch the booster arc up into the night sky, riding a pillar of flame, you took my hand, squeezed it, and said, You have written the story of our family across the stars. Hi, Mom. Last stop. After this, I'll have said everything I need to. It was just a routine launch. 
but for us, it might as well have been Apollo 11. It was my first payload, a seeker slash extractor with an upgraded propulsion system I designed. The vehicle was destined for M89282, an asteroid rich in ruthenium and tungsten. A metallurgic claim as it happened. A family event through and through. So there we stood, in the open air as night fell and the stars came up. And of course I was thinking of that night years before, when we watched the Perseids together and talked and dreamed of this very moment. You were thinking of it too, because when the booster launched, as it rose into the sky on its jet, jet of flame, you took my hand and said, you have written the story of our family across the stars. Even then I knew it wasn't true. The vehicle was headed for a rock, not a star. It was a routine launch on some voyage of discovery. But my heart was too full of quibble, full, too full to quibble. I had just smiled and squeezed your hand back. It was the finest moment of my life, you and me, um, onwards and upwards, the start of great things. But after you died and I broke down, the meaning of that night changed. Everything that had seemed wonderful seemed to turn rock false. It seemed false because it was false. I had never written anything across the stars. Sure, I had hoped to work on a project like that, a deep space probe or a colony ship, but it never happened. And now that my career was over, it never would. Then, when I found out about the plague, memory haunted me even worse, because it wasn't just me who failed to write a story across, across the stars, you see. It was all of us, our entire species, all our innovation, all our tech, all our striving, and it came to zero. I've been looking up the stars a lot, Mom, and the only story I see written across them is that we are small and insignificant will soon disappear with hardly a trace left behind. It's a hard story, and I don't much like it, so I guess maybe what I've been trying to do these past 12 days is tell a different story. Not a big story written across the stars, but a tiny one written across the home of Earth, the only world we ever got to know. I have no reason to think that anyone or anything will survive to ever read it, but whether that happens or not, truth of the story remains, that once upon a time on a planet called Earth, there lived a boy named Bashar, who loved his mother very, very much. Goodbye, Ma. I love you. Bashar Mati, son of Amal and Bayez stepson of Wyatt Mahan, November 24th of 2064, which, ironically, this Friday, this November 24th is a Friday. That almost seems too ominous. Day 12. Yeah. It almost seems like too scary of a coincidence. Oh well. It's all down from here. Afraid to talk, don't be afraid to keep talking as well there too. It's always better there when we have some conversation there. Damn, this looks like a fortress. Sunfall. It's there, metal shards. some long legs. Can't let them be alert to my presence. 